Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MathTube. This is lesson number 14 in the examination preparation series and we move on towards a new topic and that is improper integrals. Okay, so as always the five important points and I hope you are doing these things especially the first one. Use a pen and paper and keep on making notes and working out the problems along with me. That will make it make you more confident. And the rest. Okay, so let's start with lesson number 14. Improper integrals. Now look at this. Uh, sometimes the integration technique which you learned in class 11, class 12, and even uh, the technique which we were using earlier might fail. Might fail. You won't expect, but it might fail. And one of the best example is integral minus 1 to 1, 1 by x square. You can try to integrate this. Of course, you will get an answer. You can try this. Uh, you can comment on the comment box below about the answer. I will give a graphical explanation in this video or the next video. Okay, so you are going to get an answer, but this improper integral, yeah, I use that word, it is an improper integral, it does not exist. Uh, or we can use the word, it is a divergent integral. The answer you get using the normal technique. You give this question to a class 11 student or a class 12 student, they will do it and they will find an answer, but that answer will be wrong. And that is why it makes sense to learn the topic called improper integrals. Now look at this. Anyway, type 1 is something very obvious. Type 1 means the limit, uh, let us say if it is in the form a to b, then one of a or B will be infinity or minus infinity or both. It can be from minus infinity to inf infinity also. So look at this type 1 improper integral means one of the limits will be infinity or of course plus or minus infinity and this is very easy to deal with. But before we start you should go for the geometry. Um, in the previous videos, I already told you, integration stands for summation. Integration stands for continuous addition of function values. Okay, so suppose um, we have an equation like this. Let's say x square, our favorite function. So 1 square, 2 square, 3 square and the curve goes like this. Now suppose I want to add from 1 to infinity x square. So you can see that this is just one example you can see that the height of the function values keep on increasing 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 and after some time it goes out of control. So if you add all these quantities of course you will get the answer infinity and in this case we say the improper integral does not exist or some people say that is a better word to use the integral is divergent that means the sum becomes infinity instead of saying not existing the better word is the integral is divergent okay now what we do is uh, i'll give you another example uh, suppose we have an improper integral let's say 1 to infinity 1 by x square dx. I know the graph of 1 by x square. Uh, it kind of like looks like this because 1 by 1 square. When you plug in 1, you will get 1 by 1 square and that is 1. At the same time, if you plug in 0, you will get infinity. So the graph will be crashing down and then it becomes smaller and smaller, kind of like asymptotic. The word is asymptotic to the x-axis. Now look at this. The gap between the x-axis and the curve will be so small, it will be so small that after some time the height will be, let's say, it is it is equal to, and we cannot use the word equal to because it is not zero, but it is so small that you can neglect it. 
So now what happens is if I integrate from 1 to infinity this particular function it makes sense I will get an answer of course I will get an answer and what actually we do is uh, we forget about this part because that is that part is what do you call we can neglect that part it is almost zero so we neglect that part and we take this part or in other words to deal with type 1 improper integral the technique is to convert the problem into a limiting problem that is an approximation problem so we find the integral by converting it into limit sometimes the limit will uh, what do you call give us a finite number and sometimes the limit will give us the value infinity if we get a finite number then the integral will be called convergent and if we get an infinite number the integral will be called divergent okay now let's go for an example so once more i'll repeat type 1 means one of the limit will be infinity or minus infinity or both the limits okay so you can try this question uh, are you ready with pen and paper okay so go ahead try it evaluate the integral 1 to infinity 1 by x square dx graphically i know that this is going to exist i showed you the graph now i'll tell you the technique the technique is very simple uh, because basically our aim is to evaluate things by uh, what do you call bypassing the graph without using graph we have to evaluate these things that is our aim and that is the greatest thing Newton and Lebanese contributed to mathematics uh, they found a manipulation they found a technique um, through which we can bypass the graph and still we can have the answer okay anyway what we do is a very very simple thing I told you we convert this into a limiting problem we write limit t tends to infinity 1 to t 1 by x square dx so we just replace infinity with the limit okay and remember those who have learned limits properly in class 11 will understand this and this makes a lot of difference this means the approximate value okay and by the way integral 1 by x square dx is minus 1 by x plus c you can note down that integral on one corner and now let's proceed with the integration minus 1 by x um, within the limits 1 to t so that gives me limit t tends to infinity and this minus will go outside so I'll write minus over here and one when I put plug in the upper limit I get 1 by t minus 1 by 1 so i get 1 by t minus 1 okay now look at this we will plug in the value infinity and you know that 1 by a very big number think about it 1 by 10 1 by 100 1 by 1000 1 by 10000 as the number in the denominator becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger the value becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller so when t becomes very big that means the denominator has become very big this becomes zero or the limiting value is zero limiting value means approximately zero so we get zero minus one and that is equal to one see this is how we have to deal with improper integral type one okay now look at this i'll give you another question evaluate the integral integral 0 to infinity 1 by 9 plus x square uh, look at this many first year engineering students ask me a question why to do uh, why to introduce this limit why don't you put infinity directly yeah you can but that is not the uh, what do you call exact way of dealing things in mathematics uh, we have to use proper mathematical notations and then only we can claim the answer is 100% correct okay if you want you can try drawing a graph uh, to check whether the graph becomes asymptotic that means the height of heights height of the function will decrease or not asymptotic okay anyway 
uh, on one side of your note you have to find the integral value so I'm going to write the standard formula so that it will be an advantage for you integral 1 by a square plus x square is 1 by a tan inverse x by a plus c so integral 1 by 9 9 is actually 3 square plus x square dx and that is 1 by 3 tan inverse x by 3 plus c so here we go so tell me what's the first thing to do yeah convert the integral into a limiting problem and 0 to t 1 by 3 square plus x square dx and that will be limit t tends to infinity 1 by 3 tan inverse x by 3 because we already did that integration here now you can take this 1 by 3 outside and let's plug in the values so tan inverse minus tan inverse 0 that is 0 ok now look at this you know when you plug in tan inverse infinity we get pi by 2 so the answer is 1 by 2 pi by 2 minus 0 that will be equal to pi by 6 so you can conclude like this that is our integral converges to this is not the exact value but converges to pi by 6 because I showed you graphically what happens uh, when we convert this into a limiting problem we just um, what you call erase the part of the graph because the last parts uh, the last part seems meaningless or it's so small we neglect it but mathematically this is not the what you call equal answer it's a approximate answer so we write converges to okay i'll do one small problem and i'll stop and in the next video we'll be doing complex problems so please write evaluate the integral integral 1 to infinity 1 by root x dx is it an improper integral yes is it type 1 yes because one of the limit is infinity so on one side of your copy or notebook what we do is we write the standard formula so that we can integrate here itself an integral 1 by root x dx is 2 root x plus c and here what we do is we convert the type 1 improper integral into a limiting problem so we get integral 1 to t 1 by root x dx and that will give us limit t tends to infinity 2 root x within the limits 1 to t and that will give us limit t tends to infinity you plug in the upper limit so 2 root t minus 2 root 1 okay see we get infinity that means if you look at the graph of 1 by root x it's not going to become asymptotic so what we conclude is this integral um, if you want to write it uh, very casually you can write does not exist but if you want to use the proper mathematical term the word is divergent divergent means sum becomes infinity convergent means the sum becomes finite and never forget integration is nothing but addition continuous addition anyway the conclusion is the integral is divergent with this problem i'm going to wind up this video i'll be back with more problems in improper integral and we'll be doing a little bit tough problems in improper integral in the next video so till then my friends bye anyway uh, don't forget to like subscribe and share with your friends.